Okay, thank you very much, Guruji, and uh, fellow of Providence University, Dr. Kaisen Singh, Dr. Daphne Guan, Ms. Kelly Chu, uh, Danny, and all of the participants here. Hope you will be blessed this morning. I would like to present my proceeding. I have to tell you that uh, in my daily activity, I was a practitioner in my own clinics, also in hospital. And I'm lecturing biology, uh, molecular biology at the faculty at the SU. So uh, I had to admit that actually Indonesian had to learn much, much more from Taiwanese other to the opposite. But still, we have a local wisdom we can catch from during this uh, battle against the COVID-19. Well, the title of my presentation was Indonesian Lesson Learned. The government confusion uh, versus the local wisdom. I will start with the comparison between Indonesia and Vietnam. We also know that first February 2020, the Vietnamese government closed all flights from China, Hong Kong, and Macau. But the result is, until now, there was only 312 cases and zero deaths. While Indonesia, the first case reported late on March 2nd, 2020. We already depart one and a half month or at least one month uh, window of opportunity in battling this COVID-19. And this is the update of COVID-19 today in Indonesia. As of uh, last May 14, uh, last Friday, there were 16,000 confirmed cases. But today, I mean yesterday, 18,000 confirmed cases. And the case fatality rate of the dead case is today, uh, 1,500. And what about Taiwan? Taiwan were only 180 kilometers from China. Very, very close to China. But still, they come from case only 140, and the date is for only second. But still, they have the lesson learned from 2003. Taiwan is the worst territories along with Hong Kong and Southern China with 181 tons from death last uh, 2003. In Taiwan, very much quickly early as January 2020. We also have the same system with Taiwan Universal Coverage Health System, but the government of Taiwan have the list of 124 action items due to COVID-19 early on January 2020. We also have rapid and transparent response to battling COVID-19. And here's I like to present you uh, the situation today as if uh, May 14th. We only have our RT-PCR of the golden standard of the diagnosis only 127,000 tests comparing to our population. 263 million. It's very, very little. We can compare with the United States. United States now already test 3.3 million compared to their population, 323 million. It's one between 1,000 who are tested. And now we have uh, 18,000 confirmed cases with uh, 1,500 dead cases. This is what we feel now. As you can see at the chart that uh, we are not yet at the peak of the confirmed case of the infection. But fortunately, we have our death case at the most below of the chart, the red one, is stable, which is up to uh, 6 to 7 percent. And this is the chart of the blue one at the above is the daily confirmed case. While the red one at the below is uh, the dead case. I can show you that the confirmed case daily is still up and down, but so the tendency will rise. 
This is the detail of the daily confirm case. We have the record is more than 600 confirm case daily. This is the death case. Fortunately, that the death case stable on between six to seven percent. What about the age distribution of the patient? Age distribution of patient here in Indonesia is consists without happen in the world that about sixty years old patients were forty five percent and about forty five years old patients totally is about eighty five percent. This is consists with the world age distribution. And the comorbidity or the underlying disease that could have finally caused the death is the first due to hypertension. And then the diabetes, the third was the heart disease, kidney disease, and the big five is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease such as asthmatic, bronchitis, pneumonia, and such as that uh, respiratory disease. So what the lesson learned we catch here during back in the COVID-19? We have a very late response. Patient 01, 02, and 03 only stated on late on March 2nd, 2020. Compared with the Vietnam, we lost almost two months window of opportunity in letting this COVID-19. The patient 01 were close contact from a Japanese nationality. And the patient 01 was a salsa trainer, was soon spread the patient to the family of three. You see the picture on the right was the patient 01, 02, and 03. The second were, we only have one, artificial lab only on March 2020. And then, I mean, 10 artificial lab until late March 2020. So, the result for we are in low artificial swap rate, as I mentioned before. And then, uh, the president of the UNIPF have a national response, not as a lockdown what uh, we know, Wuhan or other places in whole world. We call it PSBB, uh, Pembatasan Social Berskala Besar, or you can call it large social detection. This is some kind of the adjustment of lockdown. This natural response was produced by a presidential decree. So, every level of the government, including provincial, our uh, district level should have the decree or approval from the central government. If we are, uh, as a government leader, a the provincial or a district, would like the large scale social distancing in every river, we have to get approval from the Minister of Health. This is uh, what we have so far. This is uh, the province of Jakarta, the top of the infection rate in Indonesia. They have 40% of all the confirmed cases in Indonesia. And of course, the suburban from Jakarta, Bogor, Depok, Tangerang, and Bekasi soon stated the large scale social distancing. And then the third place was, uh, sorry, the second place was West Java. And then East Java. The fourth place was Central Java. And the big five is South Sulawesi. We can also tell you that these five big uh, patterns were due to the pattern of three things. First is travel. Tourism, three was the trade pattern with the big five. They were the biggest pattern of travel, tourism, and trade in Indonesia.
And what is the problem and the challenge we get? Our problem and challenges is poor coordination among level of government. I didn't want to find some excuses, but I also know even the government of the United States have difficulties in coordination among the states and the federal government. This is not the excuse, but this is what happened in the United States and Indonesia. Second was the public confusion. You know that government will decree the large scale of social distancing. But as you also know, that what happened in Wuhan, when you have Gongsi Fachai, you have to come to your ancestor every year, will be happen here in the next Sunday. We have what we call ideal city, such as Thanksgiving Day United States. We have to go to our ancestors, to our parents, in across the country. So, this consequence is the lack of discipline due to the culture. And so the cultural burden. Now we are facing the beginning of local transmission. This is what we feel most. And the challenges is complicated bureaucracy. You know that uh, the leader of battling COVID-19 in Indonesia is BNPB, or you can also call it uh, National Authority of Disaster Relief. But still, the commandos of the Minister of Health in battling the COVID-19 at the front line still at the difference apart with BNPB. And also we have the Minister of Social Welfare with her, uh, the social safety net from the people infected with COVID-19. The second one was the lack of basic wishes. We are like of, uh, the number of epidemiologists here in Indonesia. Now we are still running our plasma comparison to battling the COVID-19 and also the secretum and stem cell to control the cytokine storm of COVID-19. Still, we are very small number of the research. And then we have the very complex message to proceed to the people. And the fourth one was transportation limitation. We have here two months already in the transportation limitation. Limitation in the transportation by air, by train, and also by ship. But next Monday, the government will leave or releasing this limitation. This is what we are doctor feel of. And the most problem in our government is the cost sharing among different government level. You know that uh, the consequences of the large scale social distancing was the funding. In the United States, they give the payment checks for the unemployment people, and also here in Indonesia. But still, blessing in disguise. There was a local government here in central Java, especially in the city of Smarang. They proceed what they call Jogo Tongo. Jogo means watching or taking care. Tongo means neighbor. So they proceed neighborhood watch or community-based lockdown. This is uh, Francis, the member of the Jogo Tongo or Neighborhood Watch, were uh, in medical aspect, were hurt by midwives in the village, and also a social safety net officer who had to proceed the social safety net for the unemployment people affected by the COVID-19. And also that uh, Jogo Tongo or Neighborhood Watch have to record and report self-quarantine for the people who come from Red Zone, who come from Jakarta, from Surabaya. They have to be self-quarantined during 40 days, uh, sorry, 40 days. They have also uh, to be as an early warning system. When they have the patient positive during the rapid test, 
they had to send the patient to the hospital. Also, the city of Semarang and the government of Central Java will prepare for the sharing costs with the central government. This is what I had to say, the best lesson here in Indonesia. But still, this is what we can say on the daily basis of Indonesian people. The cycle above will happen about half or uh, one and a half months ago. We still have transportation limitations. But the below picture was photographed yesterday, and also the right one. This is what happened here in Indonesia, and what we most fear was the local transmission. So let's pray that we can stop this COVID-19 here in Indonesia, also in Taiwan, since our president will declare that we have to live peacefully with the COVID-19. That's so far I can share with you, uh, fellow Providence University and all the attendees of the webinar. Thank you very much from the cycle of Tugu Muda Asmara. Terima kasih sudah menonton videonya. Jangan lupa like, comment, subscribe, dan juga share video ini ke semua teman dan juga keluarga. Sampai jumpa di video berikutnya.